Hello everyone, welcome to SQ TV. I am your host Rajni and today on the show we have a very special guest with us. Her name is Taryn Lee Johnston. She is an independent book publisher, a speaker and also a ghost writer. Today on the show, we are going to speak with her about book publishing and all the questions that you might have about book publishing. We are going to ask all uh, all of them from her, but before, let's welcome her to SQP TV. Hi Taryn, welcome to SQP TV. Hi, thank you for having me. It's nice to see you. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Uh so shall I just start my uh, just start the interview with the very first question? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, uh Taryn, I actually would like to know from you that how did you become an independent book publisher firstly? I mean, how did that journey happen? And also, you know, how is an independent book publisher different from, you know, other book pub- publisher? If you can please also talk about that. Yeah, okay. So, um my background's actually been in marketing. I've been in marketing and public uh, not public um project management most of my life. Um and I was building websites and writing copy for websites and a friend of mine I done his website and he said you're really good at writing and editing copy for um online have you ever done a book and I said no but I've always written and I was I was published myself at 13 so I I I always loved books and he said well I've written a novel will you have a look at it for me so I had a look and I went through and we worked together on the book um I actually helped him rewrite quite a lot of it um and then once we'd done that he said could you publish it and i'm a huge fan of the richard branson quote where he says um if somebody asks you if you can do something say yes and then figure it out afterwards so that was what i did and i said yep i can do that so um at that point fcm publishing was born um and fcm stands for for creative minds so um for several years i i just sort of worked with authors on projects that i liked and thought i found interesting and then somebody said to me a couple of years ago um you should consider de- you know deciding what um fcm is because you've got so many different genres that that um nobody really knows what you stand for so i thought about it um and i decided to split um and create a new publishing house as well so I created Chronos Publishing 2 years ago so FCM is now purely non-fiction and Chronos is life stories and novels mm-hmm. um now there are there are probably three different types of publishers so you've got your traditional publisher and they tend to be the the, the big houses your penguin um harper collins all all of those sort of big publishing houses um and yeah you know, they're, they're, the, they're the people that um authors want yeah i mean that that's mm-hmm. the dream for most authors is to get picked up by one of the big guys and get an advance and you know see your book on all the shelves and everything um you've then got self publishing so the author does everything themselves and amazon um and ingram sparks made that very very easy for um individuals and authors to do that and then you get um publishers like myself which sit in the middle So we have all of the same um contacts and procedures that the, the big publishing houses have but we're able to work a little bit more intimately with the the authors um and they tend to have a lot more control over the process. If you get picked up by one of the big six um the chances are you know, it, it's a little bit like a conveyor belt you imagine how many titles they're putting out each year you know it it you tend to lose a lot of the control and a lot of the the impact yeah. where if you work with an independent we we're, we're one to one with you um you know you you have a lot more um decision making um and at the end of the day what you want in the book is what goes you know we will guide you and we'll advise you and if it's completely wrong we will tell you straight but you know it's it's still your book it's very much your project um you do also have vanity publishers i will sort of touch on those and they they tend to be the people that will you know charge you a great deal of money and publish mm-hmm. anything um we're not like that um in, in our in my case too, we we charge for services like um editing and formatting and proofreading but they're all the services mm-hmm. you would pay for anyway 
um, to get a book to a stage where an agent would take it to, to pitch it to one of the big six. So it's something that an author needs to consider before they go through the publishing process is that they know that they need to set aside some money to have a book formally edited, at the very least edited and proofread. Um, because, you know, you, you miss so much. So once you've got those things done, mm-hmm. um, then you can either give your book to an agent and they will pitch it to the, the bigger publishing houses, or you can send it off to submission to smaller publishing houses like myself who will take submissions from you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. Okay. Uh, okay. So also, also, Taryn, I also would like to know that, um, you know, so to, to become a publisher or to get into book, book publishing, is it important for one, for the publisher to, to have written their own book or they should have, you know, uh, a knowledge about book publishing and they, they can become a publisher? I don't think you have to have written your own book. I mean, I, I've written two. I, I only actually wrote my main one last year so um, it's taken me a while to get around to it um so no I don't, I don't think you have to um know I think you have to know books um and you have to understand you know what readers want um and have to have a love of that um in terms of the the learning how to become a publisher no, I mean you know there are a lot of people that have degrees um in the industry and they have a lot of industry qualifications but I don't believe you necessarily need to have that I, I, I certainly don't um but I think you, you can learn um and there's a, there's a lot of information out there on how to do it the most important thing is understanding what makes a book work um mm-hmm. and how to to pull the story out of the author I think I think that for me is, is the key is knowing when to and how to get the, the story out of the author Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. So when someone reaches you for their books to get published, so what do you look for, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, in the book so that, uh, you know, or what do, how do they convince you to get their books published and what do you look for in their books? For me, I look for something that's different. Um, so okay. I, I mean, I've, we've got a lovely story. Um, I, Parveen Ashraf came to me. She's um, an ITV chef now. Um, but she came to me one day um, and she said, I've got a, a series of recipes and I want to turn it into a book. Um, and he tells her I just had major surgery and I was really poorly. And um, she said, I'll come around and I'll cook lunch for you. Um, and she sort of whirled into, into my house, um, trashed my kitchen cooking dinner, uh, knocked two cups of black coffee over on my cream carpet um, and was in such a, a frazzled state. And I said to her, just stop. It's going to be okay Um, and we're going to publish a book. But what we're going to do is we're going to not just have a series of recipes, we're going to have a story with each one of those recipes and we're going to explain why those recipes mean something to you because every single one of them came from Mm -hmm. her family. She'd cooked either it was um, something she cooked for her husband or a recipe that her son loved or something that her mum had done. So she got all these anecdotes all the way through Mm -hmm. and that's what we did. Um, and it's the same when I, you know, when I talk to business owners. Um, there's a lot of business books out there. So for me, it has to be something that's, that's a little bit different that um, makes it stand out. Um, having the connection with the author as well. I, I can't, I, I can only publish something if I've got a really good connection with the author and, and I know we're going to be able to work together because it's writing a book's a really personal thing. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I didn't realise quite the depth of nerves that an author has until I published mine last year. And I, I was on both sides of it. As a publisher, every time I release a book, I have that moment of fear of how is it going to be received? You know, is there going to be a problem yeah. with it? Um, have I missed something in there? So, you know, the, there's always that. Um, but then being the author as well is how is it going to affect my reputation? How are people going to take it? Are people going to write good things about it? And, and all of those nerves. So um, you, you build that relationship with an author and you have to have that connection with them because you're taking them through what you, it's, it's a really emotional journey and they're very connected to um, and invested in their book, which, which is right. You know, if you're not invested in it and you don't believe yeah. in it and feel it, it's, n- it's never going to be in. You know, you've got to be able to hold that book and go, I wrote this, you know, this is mine. Mm-hmm. Um so for me, it's about knowing that I can get that connection, knowing that I can work with, with somebody 
but also knowing that it's got something. I've, I've just, um, just before we came on air, um, read a review of one of the books that we published earlier this year. Um, and someone has said, you know, it's a brand new take on um, an original story and how delighted they were to read it and, you know, that they couldn't put it down. That's mm-hmm. that's what I'm looking for. That sort of um, something something that's new to the table. Okay, okay. But, you know, uh, Taryn, I, I actually would like to mention here that it, it happens in some cases that... Um, now that you have mentioned that one, you know, the book should be creative and should be different than other books. So uh, I would like to ask how different should it be? I mean, uh, we'll talk about that later. But before, I actually would like to know from you that, you know, in some cases it happens that, you know, the publisher uh, don't publish the books or don't, you know, uh, make their names, associ- associate their names with that book because, you know, they don't think it is going to be profitable for them. And also it, they feel that even though it is creative, but it might not sell in the market. So th- these cases also happen. So uh, how can we, uh, you know, merge a creative book with the audience need? Social media. If, if the author isn't prepared okay. to um, invest in, so obviously my background is marketing. So um, uh-huh. I always say to authors, you know, you, you've, got, you've got to put the, the work in. You've got to do the legwork. You can have the most amazing book, but if you're not telling people about it and you've not created a following, created interest, it's not going to sell. There, there are so many books published, um, you know, every single week. There's so much noise and so much chatter. You've got to be able to get through that. And the only way you're going to do that is to start talking about it and raising your own following and creating the hype around it. Um, mm-hmm. And that, that's really how you do it. And how can how can we create that social media hype? Because, you know, you are into marketing. So how can we build our brand or our image in social media so that, you know, people would follow us and people would like it? Because, you know, today, uh, I think in these times, especially, you know, uh, everyone is on social media and everyone is creating content in their own way. But to make your content different and creative than others, what should they need to do? It's finding the hook. It's finding that thing that makes so, – so, as we said, you've got to have a book that's different. Um, so you've, you've, got, you've got something that, that makes you stand out. That's what you play on. That's what you build on. Create videos. Talk to other people. Um, so your content isn't just flat, you know, you, like you're doing here. You know, this, this kind of content um, is much more interesting. People inherently are lazy. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's as simple as that. They want. They don't yeah. want to have to troll through pages on your website to find the information. They don't want to read huge, great swathes of information. They, they want mm-hmm. it in small chunks. So they want to know straight away. You know, what's this book about? How's it going to help me? What's it going to give me? Why should I read it? You know. So you've got to put yourself in the shoes of your reader. And one of the things I always Mm. say to authors before we even start, I send them out a little sort of sheet and say, okay, think about the perfect reader. You know, who's going to buy your book? What do they look like? What are they into? Why are they going to read it? What is it about your book? What makes your book so different that they're going to pick it up from all the others on the shelf or all of the others on Amazon? Why would they pick yours up? And you've got to imagine that person in your head and that's the person you speak to. Um, and you do the same with your marketing, you know, so you, you make it easy for them. You've got to make it easy for people to, to understand why yours is the book that they should be picking up. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. OK, so even though you have you might be having 100 followers or just 50 followers, but just engage with them. You're, you, you, yeah. you mean to say that? OK, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I get frustrated with people. And this this is not just authors. This is, this is across the board in marketing that think that that social media is just literally pitching and it's not the key is in the word social. So Mm -hmm. the more conversations you have, the more you talk to people, the more you share with other authors, the more you, Mm -hmm. um, you know, talk to to bloggers, reviewers, they're they're the people that are really going to help you. The the online bloggers um, and reviewers that are prepared to take your your book and, and, and have a look at it for you. Um, they're the relationships you need to build as an author so that you know when your book's ready you can say to them will you have a look at it and will you take it for me um 
and then that you get more people talking about it because the more people that are talking about your book um you know if you can get it onto goodreads and and again it's it's down to make sure your author profile on amazon is set so that people can see who you are a lot of people mm. want to know who you as the author are and they want to know about you you know what makes you an authority on what you've written so you know why, why should I believe in you why should I take yeah, if, particularly if it's a business book you know why should I listen to what you've got to say as opposed to to somebody else so it's establishing mm. your credibility it's ensuring that people can find you easily they can find information about you know where you're coming from um, but also that you're relatable so it's not they're not talking to an automated system they're talking to to you and knowing that they're talking to an author um the amount of times Mm -hmm. uh people will say well I'm writing about you how did you do it how did you start what did you you do and being able to get from another author that information and that connection it's relationship Mm -hmm. building okay okay I mean uh I think uh people should really work upon that that aspect of themselves because uh social media is um, you know so much gripping and people are doing everything on social media these days so uh yeah so now coming to my next question yeah would you like to add something to that no i was just going to say i genuinely don't care what people have had for breakfast i don't care where they're drinking coffee unless there's a discount on it and then i might be interested what i care about is you I want to know, you know what what mm-hmm. you're thinking, where you're, where you are, where you're coming from. I, people sharing nonsense on, on social media is what's given it such um, a bad reputation. Yeah. But actually, you know, if you if you do it properly and you get involved and you get involved with people and conversations, it will work for you. I mean, that is true. That is true because people, uh, you know, in in these days, people blame TikTok that TikTok is not a good app, and they, um, you know, it, they make cringy videos and people talk about tiktok like this but tiktok is just a platform it is uh, it totally depends upon you if you create good stuff and good content on tiktok it can be named as a really good platform for you and it can become beneficial for you yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah yeah mm-hmm. so now uh, tell coming to my next question what is the the definition of a different because you mentioned different book uh, you know a different uh, you look for something different in you know when you wants to publish a book so what is the definition of a different book and what are the ingredients of you know uh, writing a good book uh right okay firstly write about what you know that's that's okay. the key all right write about what you know and write about what you do not what everybody else does yeah if it's a business book i don't want to see a rehashed version of jim rohn or somebody else you know with with their insights i want your insights so mm-hmm. first of all most write about what you know and make it yours secondly make sure it's your voice there's nothing worse than getting a book that sounds particularly again because a lot of business people are um involved in either you know public speaking or videos and things like that so we know what they sound like we can we can hear them we can hear them do a talk so there's nothing worse than getting a book that then sounds nothing like them you know you can't hear their voice so a book you know needs to have that it needs to have for me a business book needs to have a little bit of humor in it as well um you know, if you can make if you, you can take the driest topic and make it either yeah juicy it, yeah yeah just you know give give me a reason to actually keep going with it um i don't mm-hmm. need book doesn't need to be a slog um yeah. and just don't be afraid to put your spin on it um just because you know there are um a set idea that you know a coaching manual is supposed to do this or a self help book supposed to do that nonsense you know if it's if you're the expert in your field so you write about what you know and you put it across how you would put it across i would, i got a book from an author who i've known um for many years and when his book came um i went back to him and i said no and he said why not and i said i can't hear you i've seen you on stage i've seen you in meetings i have heard you speak so many times i can't hear you and this is it's nonsense um and he said well funny enough my wife has said the same thing so he went back and he rewrote it and when i got it back i could hear his sense of humor in it i could hear his accent because that's the other thing you know we we all we all have an accent we all have certain things that we say um, yeah. that's one of the hardest things when you ghostwrite 
is being able yeah. to up somebody else's voice and being able to write like them um so you have to listen very very carefully so i know that when i when i get somebody's book if it sounds like them um and that's that's key so these are the things that i'm looking for you know is it could it be anybody's book on the shelf could is it just a rehash of so many different theories and philosophies um and coaching steps if it is then that, that's no use because I can. It's just one of many. It's just going to get lost. But if it's if it's your ideas and and how you put it across and your tone of voice and your ideas and your inspiration, you know, you might have taken mm. something from somebody else. You might have had um, I don't know, maybe Tony Robbins or something. I don't I don't quite go with that. But um, yeah, you might have been inspired by something he's done, but you've taken your spin mm. on it and you've made it yours that's what we're looking for not just simply regurgitated um okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so but uh, you know how uh, how do you say no to a writer who has come to you for you know to get to get their books published so how do you so say no and uh, is it important to be brutally honest with them or i mean and how or you know you can also say no to them in a subtle way or like you just you said that you were said to that uh, writer that you don't like his book at all i, I am totally brutally honest and all of my okay. authors will tell you that i am really straight with them and i think there's no point um in not being honest because you're not being fair if i get a book mm-hmm. sent to me and it, you know th- there's going to be books that are in different genres that um i don't feel i can best promote an author um it might be too similar to something i've published in the past so there will be a clash or a conflict of interest so what i always do is i will always review it and i will always go back and give the author firstly my honest opinion of the book you know and if i think it needs work or if i think you know there's areas they can improve it on and i will always explain you know the reason why it it's not something that, that i can you know i feel i'm i'm best positioned to take or um you know i've already got a similar title so i'm always very honest in that respect um but i'm also very very aware as i said it's often a passion you know people have spent a lot of time on it so i would never be rude mm-hmm. to an author at all um i mean there's been a couple of times where i've had things sent to me and the author themselves have been quite rude in how they've approached me um in mm-hmm. which case then then they they get the full honesty back um but you know it, the the best way to do it is is to to be honest to be straightforward with people um and to simply explain the situation okay and um, you know uh at the end of the day it is for their benefit and they are going to benefit from it yeah, yeah. mhm so and now coming to my next question you know for the ones who wants to uh, you know start writing a book and who wants to you know um who wants to become an author what should they do i mean should they like uh, go to an a- to an agent and uh, talk about it or should they also you know uh, talk to a writer an author who has already been into writing and who has already become an author so what should they do right sit down and write okay right okay. um Yeah, the, the most important thing to do is just simply start. Um, you know, even if you only write a hundred words a day or a thousand words a day, just make a start. Mm-hmm. The best things to do are to always carry a notepad around with you because you never know mm-hmm. when inspiration is going to hit or where you're going to get. Particularly if you're writing fiction, the ideas. Yeah, you mm-hmm. might hear a piece of dialogue or you might see something happen that you think. that would work i like that make a note of it um or have a notepad by the side of the bed so if you wake up when you think of something the amount of authors that will say to me you know i had a dream and then in the dream this this happened and i, I knew it was going to be great and i had to to do it um mm-hmm. but it's all about first off writing you know um make you it's like any habit the more you do it the more you keep doing it so you have to kind of set yourself a time yeah. scale you know i'm going to sit down at 7:00 every morning or 7:00 every evening and i'm just going to write a short period of time don't worry about editing it don't worry about correcting it just write it because otherwise you'll spend mm-hmm. half of your time rewriting what you've just done don't do it get it out of your head and onto paper or onto your screen because it's no use to anybody if it's in here 
Yeah, by all means, yeah. talk to other authors, talk mm-hmm. to you know, writing coaches. Um, I wouldn't necessarily uh, uh, approach any sort of agencies or publishers until you're, you're you know, at least three quarters of the way through or even finished um, because they, mm-hmm. they, they need to know you've got a finished product. Um, take writing courses if you feel you need to, but initially just make a start um, you know, and see how you feel. Don't worry about... Um, your grammar or your punctuation, all of those things can be sorted out for you. Uh, you know, there are, okay. there are specialists that can do all that. You know, I've got a team of people that do all our editing and proofreading. Um, I've got a lot of authors that have come to me and said, I can't write, I'm dyslexic. That's not a problem. Why don't you um, look at doing some form of um, voice to text? So you don't have to write it. But yeah, the, the, you can mm-hmm. transcribe your books and have them then put through. There's lots of different things you can do. But the book's got to get out of here first. And until you do that, then you, you know, you're, you're only ever going to think about being a writer. Okay. Okay. And are there any set of skills that one needs to have to become a writer? No, none at all. Okay. Um, I mean, I've worked with people, uh, I'm working with a, a lady at the moment who is, she's, she's never written, she's, if she was told at school she was useless, um, but her story is so passionate. Um, so all, all I said to her was brain dump it, just get it out of your head and to me, and we'll do the rest. You don't have mm-hmm. to worry about it, you don't need to have, you know, a degree in English literature in order to write a book you don't if you're writing a business book obviously you've got to have the skills in the business and the industry that you're in if you're writing Mm -hmm. fiction you just gotta have an imagination Mm -hmm. okay okay and how important is uh, you know reading for the ones who wants to become a writer is reading important to them Uh, I would say it was because I, I mean, I read all the time. Uh, but again, I've got particularly nonfiction authors who have said, I've never read a book. Um, okay. That one kind of always makes me take a step back in, in horror. Um, but, you know, a lot of business people, um, they don't. They're, they're so busy grafting and, and creating their business that they, they, they don't have time for it, or it's not the way their mind works. Um, I think taking time out to have a look at how books are structured and what's in there and, and how you get your message across helps. Um, but it's, it's not, it's not a necessity. You, you can do it. Um, but yeah, I think everyone should read. Okay. Okay. So it totally depends upon your choice. And if you are a creative thinker, so, you know, you, you can go about that, but if you like write a reading, so you can go uh, that okay so now coming to you know my last question to you Taryn I you know when I was uh, when I got to know that I was supposed to interview you so I was googling about book publishing so then I came to know about book publishing scam is also happening Mm -hmm. Uh, so would you like to inform anything about that uh, you know book publishing scam to to the audiences who's listening us right now I think if anyone um if you approach any a publishing house and they say yes they'll take it without having seen it if they're going okay. to charge you a lot of money and they expect you to buy a certain amount of books again without yeah and they're, 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 if it all seems very easy and they all want to take it off you um take a step back um and also do do your due diligence check for reviews um you know Certainly in in the UK, there's something called the Alliance of Independent Authors. Um, They've got a set of um, people that they recommend that that are approved. Um, We're a member of that. Um, You know, we have to be accredited. We have to be checked to make sure that we're we're not doing that. So do do have a look online and make sure that the people that you're working with are genuine. You know, I hear a lot of horror stories where people say, well, I spent three, four thousand pounds um, and the book I got back was was poor quality. It wasn't edited, it, you know, and I've got 500 copies in my garage that I can never sell. Um, so as with every single thing that you, you're going to invest in, research it first and find out, you know, check their reputation, check, you know, um, at the people that have worked with them, look at what they've published See what you know, see where they come from, and make sure you can contact them. 
you know, if mm-hmm. they haven't got an address or a phone number or an email on their website, you know, why, why, what's, what's going on? Um, mm-hmm. it seems too good to be true. It probably is. Okay. 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 And any last message for the aspiring writers? Um, my advice is always, please just write, you know, if, if you think you've got a story in there, then then get it out. Don't don't keep thinking there's be a right time to do it or well, I I need to do this first one. Just do it. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Sharon, for coming to Escape TV and speaking with us. It was so lovely chatting with you, and it was an amazing, amazing episode. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. Likewise. All right, guys, that's it from Escape TV. Keep on watching. Done. Thank you. Thank you again. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, sh- I mean, uh, the editor is probably going to edit it and we'll premiere it uh, later, but I'm going to send you the link of the episode. Great. All right, lovely. Thank you so much. It really was lovely to meet you. Same here. Same here. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a good Take day. Care. And you. Bye-bye. Bye.